Hello everyone, I'm Paul and today we're going to be milling. We're going to show you a little bit of the process that I do when I mill some lumber. So let's get at that right now guys. Follow me down and we're going to get down. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, wash the log. Let's go down here. So I've got my gas powered uh, pressure washer here and the log I'm going to wash. This is where I wash them here in this little lo location. You can see this one's been uh, dragged through all the mud. Um, it's been skidded out of the bush so when the ground was a little bit on the sloppy side. So anyways I'm going to start up the machine and we'll get this uh, washed up and then once it's washed up we'll get it over to the mill. All right, guys, that log is washed up pretty good. Uh, one thing when you do wash logs, um, they're never 100% clean, right? There's still going to be some sand in there. The other thing is you could actually pressure wash the bark off the off the uh, log as well, but uh, I don't do that. It uh, takes too long and too much water, and then the water gets into the wood too much. So anyways, the next thing to do is to pick up the log and get it onto the mill. So let's get that done. All right, guys, we got the log onto the mill. The next thing to do is to push it tight against the log stops. Um, this is one of the log stops here, you can see. 
Uh, there's three of them, or four of them going down here. I've got the two tall ones. That's all I'm really activating right now. The short ones are not being used right now. Um, to do that, after I do that lock it or push it tight, we're going to use the lock clamps to lock it into place. So, I've got my bar. Just like to make sure that it's tight. That's pretty good already, so. Take the log clamp here and we'll just clamp it in. And that's to prevent the log from rolling back off. And we've got a second one over here. We'll put this one on. This type here where you have to spin them to tighten them up are a little bit more of a pain. Some of them you just snap and lock them. Okay, so the log is uh, fairly secure. It's not as tight as I'm going to put it. Uh, the next thing to do is the, well, you want your log parallel on the mill. So the next thing that I do is I go from each end. Uh, this is the small end, so we'll start at the larger end. And we're going to see where the pith is or the center of the log is. So I'll come down here. We can see the center of the pith right here. What I do is I'm going to measure it. And I measure it always from this distance from the track. I've got a board at the other end as well. And we can see here. You might be on the wrong side, but I'll show you. Uh, it's about 11 and, a, 11 and a half inches. So, and you can see this diameter of this log is, uh, it's about a 15 inch diameter down here. So we got about 11 and a half. So what we have to do is we've got to get the other end up at 11 and a half. So the, the pith is in the same location. So I'll come down here. And I check, you can see the pith there. You see I'm sitting here at 10 and a half, so I've got to go up about an inch. And the way I do that, there's um, the method that I use. I just have a, <laughs> a car jack here and a board. I just use this under here. And I'm going to lift the log using this jack here, scissor jack. Actually, this is uh, from a Toyota vehicle. Some guys use a motorcycle jack, they work really well. Um, Woodland Mills does sell a tow board that you can use, which I think I'm going to invest in because this jack thing is kind of not the best, but it works. So I just use a ancient screwdriver. And I'm going to sp spin this up until I get it up to 11 and a half inches. Now the reason I want to have it uh, centered is that way there's going to be, uh, I'm going to cut the wood, the logs on the even even plane, and there's going to be a lot less, if uh, a lot less stress in the wood when you cut it. And that's the whole idea. You want to minimize as much as you can. Basically, trying to cut the uh, the tree or the log the way the tree grows. Sometimes that pith can be way, way off, like three to four inches, maybe even more, sometimes five. It's crazy. And when it's like that, you can lose a lot of wood. That's why some logs are better saw logs than other logs. This is a bit of a slow method. Uh, I could have a nut in, on here with a drill and turn it, but uh, like I said, I need to invest in something a little bit better. It takes up too much time doing this. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to the end again. And I'm going to check it. You see I've got 11 and a half. Actually, it's pretty good on the first uh, first guess. Now, one thing to note is that uh, the log sometimes can tip at the other end. So you always have to double check the other end to make sure that it's the same. So, And I'll go do that right now. Oop. 
and you can see there it's hard to hold the tape uh, we've got about 11 well we've got 11 inches even so there's I have to bring that end down a little bit so anyways I'm gonna finish adjusting that and then after that uh, I'll show you the next thing that I do it's, uh, the next thing that I do is I open up the mill here where the wheel band wheels are get to them and what I'm going to do with a couple things in here I'm going to first just kind of clean out some of the sawdust here give it a quick brush Um, when there's a lot, of, lot more sawdust, every once in a while I'll take the uh, leaf blower and I'll blow out the sawdust as well. After that's done, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. You can see I've got my tensioner. So I'm just going to set the tension on the blade. Okay, I've got the tension where I like. And the final thing that I'm going to do in here is basically I'm going to check to make sure that the blade is tracking properly by turning the, uh, the wheel here. So I can see that's turning good and I can feel behind it. It's where I want on that side and it's where I want on this side. So that tells me the, um, the blade should stay on the uh, wheels. So we can close all this up and we'll go on to the next step. So the next thing that I do is I'm going to adju uh, adjust the saw head to the height that I want for my very first cut. And I usually do that from the front here where I can actually watch it drop down. And I can see basically where I want to line it up. Then I'm going to go behind it and I'm going to look underneath. And if you come here, you can see where I'm, what I'm looking at. You can kind of see where my blade is. Now the other thing, if we look down on the left side here, I'm also making sure that my log stops are not going to get uh, dinged by the blade. So that's uh, very important as well. So that's basically where I'm going to cut it on the first one. Um, now that I know where I got my line, the next thing that I'm going to do is, as I mentioned earlier, that there's probably some sand in the, um, in the log still because when you wash it, you don't get it all out. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove some bark, so stay tuned for that. Right, you can see that's a pretty messy thing so I'm predicting basically the path of the blade is going to come where I just cut the bark away 
The next thing I got to do is I have to get rid of the bark because you can see here it gets everywhere, it gets on the track. We can see right here this big piece that'll catch the wheel on the on the uh, on the frame when I'm pushing the uh, saw head down. So I'm going to take the blower and I clean it all up. As you can well imagine, it takes a lot more time than just to go ahead and cut the uh, log right away, but uh, it sure saves on the blades. Okay, um, one thing, it is fun to use the blower and it is fun to use the log peeler, so it does take a bit more time, but I enjoy it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention to you is that um, if we look here at the log on the end, one thing I also try to do is, depending on the way the rings are going, uh, this log's not too bad, but sometimes you'll get your pith way over here, well, maybe over here you get a pith, and the rings are really tight on this end, and they're really wide over here so basically you'll have more compression on your log here so I wouldn't cut my log this way if my pith was way over here I would roll it so that the end with the uh, the side where there's no compression I'd be cutting across on that and then the side with compression I'd be cutting across on that um, that way it will take a lot less stress out of your wood okay the next thing to do is to get the first cut so let's get the mill started and uh, let's get it done Alright guys, we got our first cut done. Next thing to do is take that slab. Now, I don't know whether you call it a slab or you call it an off cut. But either, either or, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to take this off. And this is going to end up getting cut up into uh, firewood for or camping firewood. So. That's uh, the next step that I do is I'm going to rotate the log 180 so the top here where I just cut is going to end up on the bunk here, flat on, and then I'll make my next cut. So let's get that done. Okay guys, to roll the log I'm going to do the log clamps. Now sometimes you got to be careful um, if your log is a little bit rocky it could roll back out at you so you'd actually start to roll it before you actually completely remove the log clamp. Okay, so one of two ways that I do it, um, I use the can hook. And if I find it too heavy, I'll use the tractor to uh, roll the log. So I'll try always first with the can hook so I don't have to start the tractor up. You 
know what I forgot to do guys? Why the log just rolled back on me? Again, I've got to pay attention a little bit more to what I've got to do and uh, I guess a little bit more. Um, that way I won't uh, end up injuring myself or letting the log off. I forgot to take the, uh, the jack out. So the jack fell down, uh, it actually ended up pushing the log, so I've got to be more careful with that. I guess that's one of the disadvantages when you're recording, you're thinking about what you're doing, um, about the filming, at the same time as what you're doing on the job. So that's why a lot of times, uh, like I do a lot of forestry work and stuff, and uh, I don't film any of that. Uh, just for the sake of uh, not getting injured. So that's uh, 90 degrees. I'm going to do once more on the roll. There we go. We got it turned. So the next thing to do is cut another uh, slab off the top and then I'm going to roll it again. Now for the third cut, basically the two things that are different than from the first two cuts. Now, first thing is that you can see here on the log stop is that I made sure that the wood here is flat against the log stop so that it's a 90 degrees. And the other thing I didn't have to do is I didn't have to trim the bark and I won't have to trim the bark on the fourth cut. So basically uh, it's the same process again. What I did is I measured from the board here up to the center of the pith uh, to make sure that the log is level or parallel going across the mill. I'll make my cut and then what I'll do is I'll rotate it 180 degrees so that the bottom here becomes the top and that will be the final cut. And that will give me a cant and we'll measure the size of the can once we're done that. So let's get the uh, third cut done.
Well, this brings us to the halfway point of my process milling logs. And so far, I hope you've enjoyed it. This will conclude part one. So hopefully you'll come back next week for part two. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, would really appreciate it. If you did, it helps out by hitting that subscribe button down below. Once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Gelin Outdoors.